Um, and yeah, yeah. so, so it, that, that was I've, awesome. That's one of those movies that I can watch over and over and never get tired of. So let me ask you guys, what's your all time? Let's just let's go movie. What's your favorite movie? It doesn't it doesn't ever superhero. No, yeah. What's your favorite movie? The Last Dragon. The what? The Last Dragon. Bruce Leroy, Leroy Green, Shonuff, The Glow. Are y'all serious right now? No, I know what that is. I'm trying to think about what. I guess my movie will be The Wiz, just because it. I I used to watch it all the time growing up, and it kind of shaped, um, like me being a performer and stuff. So I'll say The Wiz. I have a whole bunch of favorite movies. Me too. No, you gotta pick one though. I know we got we all got a whole bunch, but if you gotta have to pick one, just my favorite movie. It's so hard to pick. It's so hard to pick. Oh, it's a lot. What, no, no. what movie shaped your childhood? Um. Like, Holiday Heart was one of my favorite movies. <laughs> Holiday Heart? Which one is that one? Holiday Heart. I hated that movie. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Wait, get me caught up. What's Holiday Heart? Who's in it? What happened? Go ahead, Alisa. Tell him about your movie, girl. <laughs> I might have seen I it. I don't know what it's called. About this, this closet. It, he was, I wouldn't even say closet. Is that he the Vin Rings movie? Huh? Is that the Vin Rings movie? Yes. Okay, now I'm caught up. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay. Listen, I, I listen, there was a whole bunch of, because, like, I love the poetic justice. I love, like, watching life. Like, I loved watching, like, Disney movie, like, Lion King and Beauty and the Beast. I used to fall asleep to every single night. I watched that movie every single night right. for, like, Two years. That's the movie I would yeah, pop yes. into my like yeah, little yes. video player and just go to town with it. Um, the movie I used to watch, uh, other than The Wiz, the other movie I used to watch. Well, there's two of them that I used to watch over and over as a kid was Matilda. Um, it's Trunchbull. Parent that Trap was mine. That was Which on. one, the original or the remake with Lindsay Lohan? The remake with Lindsay Lohan. Parent Trap, that was a good movie. Yes, I love The Parent Trap and um, oh, let me think of what else I used to watch like as a I kid. I used to watch uh, The Sound of Music a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, the Outsiders. I like okay. The Outsiders. See, as a kid, I was watching Ferris Bueller. I was watching any of Yes. Ferris Bueller, Sam! I was, Bueller, wa- I was watching I never, Back in the Future. I never watched Ferris Bueller. Really yes. a good movie, yeah. man. That was so, it was such a... Cause it all was, right, all right. It was See. one of those movies that you had to watch when you were in high school because it was something that you wanted to do so bad. Like, but so check this out, though, right? Now that you're older, 30s perspective, I just saw a meme... They were saying that there are three stages to life. The first one, when you were late to Ferris Bueller. The second one, when you were late to Cameron. And then the third one, when you were late to Mr. Rooney. And like, that's like a perfect thing. Like, you, I'm so Cameron. Like, about my shit. You know? Yeah, I can agree with that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, you're right. Hey, hey, here's a quick, speaking of movie assignments, Sharon, did you ever watch Baby Boy when you talked about? Oh. All right, now you gotta put a Ferris Bueller on the list. Oh my God, man. Yeah, yeah I, I'm out that. I'm out the loop. Yeah, get on those two things. You yeah, I'll definitely gonna watch I the just Back watched, in the Future. All that. I loved Back in the Future. Um, I just watched The Never Ending Story for the first time this year. Oh, with a trio and and Sebastian Fair and, and Sebastian. Yeah. And the nothing in the childlike empress. Who, yeah. by the way, if you look her up, she looks exactly the same way she did when she played that role. It's 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 kind of spooky. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that. That's crazy. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, no, my high school sweetheart always used to talk about that movie. I was like, what is the big deal about this movie? So one day oh, when I it. I happened to be at home, I was like, and I saw it right after I got my little smart TV. I was like, oh, I'm about to watch this movie everybody keeps talking about. So I enjoyed it. It was a low key deep. Paula, I watched, I, I actually read the book. I mean, the book was thick as fuck. It was like 1,500 pages, never ending story. I read the book for that. And there was yeah. so many, of course, there's so many more characters for it. This was, Ooh, it's but it was a good read. Fantasy. Back when I was reading, before I retired from reading, I don't read. There's, there's a lot of um, really good uh books that have become movies. Can y'all see that? That's what she looks like now. Oh, yeah, she looks the same. For real? Like, she looks the same. Oh, magical and shit? The fuck? She's like sitting there like salad a clam like an oyster, like Let's come on, let's run some more good movies. Cause like oh, movies and like TV shows were always like, you know. Well, like my mom will always watch a lot of older movies. So she got me hip to like a lot of older movies, like especially like musicals and stuff like that. So like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Annie. Um oh, so wow. like I, I grew up watching a lot of like those kind of fans. I haven't movies. I haven't watched Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I was like six years old. Mary Poppins, all that type of stuff. Like I grew up watching a lot of that type of stuff, show toony type stuff. Cause my mom was really into that, so I love that stuff. See, I was like we were talking about last time, all the National Lampoon vacations. My dad would have me watch that. I was, you know, yes. I was watching. Um, oh, I was big on Demolition Man, big on the Fifth Element. You know, those are a thing, like. Some, some things matter when they come on, I'll watch zombies. Like, my dad loves zombies, so I think I've watched every, like, Day of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> I think I've watched every one that was made. from the like Shaun of the, of the Dead? Dead? Huh? Shaun of the Dead, the parody? That was funny. Yeah, I watched that one. So, unpopular opinion, and I just told Brandon this last night. Uh, as we were chatting, I tend to like white movies more than black movies. It depends. In got- general, in general, I mean, now keep in mind, black movies, just they hit different. Because, you know, when they hit, they hit different. But in general, I tend to just like white movies over black movies. I feel like they're stuck. In, I feel like black movies are stuck in this box. And right. I feel like the story. I agree with that. We don't have the that's budget why behind. I don't, I'm not. I'm not. Well, that's why I'm happy about Jordan Peele because Jordan Peele's changes and things in terms of budgets and storylines, and you know that that's cool because I, I got I got real tired of seeing the same shit, and like that's part of the reason why. I watch black exploitation films. They're so bad and so repetitive. They're funny as hell to me. And they even have, I don't know if y'all saw it on Amazon, the, the app called Brown Sugar, where it's just black movies and black media. And But it's not it's not any of the really good ones, though. I'm going to say that. And, yeah, I think I me kind of agree with Sherelle on that. And, yeah, me and John just had this discussion actually not too long ago. I was talking to him about how like I'm I don't like the narrative of like um black TV shows. Uh, we didn't go into movies. We talked about black TV shows and yeah. how it's always the same thing. And like the realest shit ever spoken. The one girl was like, um, she was talking about how like. BT had it. Who said it? Was it you, Brandon? Was that you? That said what? Somebody BT said it. Is what? And it was the realest shit I've ever heard. Is that BT had the the opportunity to take black entertainment TV, like shows, 
and make it something and they failed miserably. They're and, horrible. And I, yeah, and I didn't understand what was being said until I started looking and, and really like looking at it from a different yeah. perspective. And I said, and she, the person who said it, I can't remember who it was. They were like, we couldn't have a, a, a DIY black DIY of you know black people out here doing things like buying houses and right. you know remodeling having their own businesses um you know doing you know yes. what what the white people are doing like right. it's not so much about a black or white thing no. but it's about showing that we're more than just drugs guns yes. money and booty and think about some of the most successful black shows ever. We're talking about Cosby Show, Fresh Prince, and now even like Blackish, where they're showing a different side of black people. For the first time with Cosby Show and Fresh Prince, you saw successful black family. They still had the problems and shit, but like successful black family, they were affluent, they were, you know, owning property, they, you know, had their own company, they had their own career. Nice houses. And they were well spoken they right they they had you know butlers like you know like in the fresh prince there was the yeah. butler, like you know what i mean and he was black and they treated him like family he wasn't like you know what i mean he wasn't like a servant like you know what i mean right. so for me it was for me it's just like that's how i feel like i feel that cuz he was watching some new show that's on um, I think it's on Netflix or whatever he's watching, but it's about this um, gay black man who owns a uh, strip club in like, I what don't know. What kind of strip club is it? Is it a gay strip club? No. I don't know. But, I don't know what know, this show is. Is this show on about, Netflix? Like, you know, how um, this other woman, she like, you know, she's a stripper trying to go right like trying to do the right thing now so now she's out buying properties because she wants to do dance and she lost her kids because she was on drugs like it's the same narrative over and over and over and right. over and over and, okay. over and i was like it's disappointing to see yeah. like you know these shows like desperate housewives basketball wives of these black yeah. women out here acting crazy ridiculous like to me, it's an embarrassment. But to other people, that's entertainment. I agree. With you. Um, yeah, for some people, it's entertainment. I know that for me, I know we've had this discussion amongst ourselves and even on this show about um, my media yeah, as a kid wasn't really sheltered. So as a kid, I watched Comic View and I found a pattern. They talked about like the same six topics. And com like the comic view, the black comics talk about the same like six things, like you know how broke they are with debt, you know smoking weed, the difference between black people and white people, like like having sex and they like hump the stool, like it was like the same like six things to talk about. And by the time I was 12, 13, I was like, yo, like they're not even funny anymore. I'm done. And like that's when you know white comedians, I started laughing my ass off with them and going in a different direction. And because it doesn't change. I went to the improv. I saw Dion Cole, and I think he's an awesome awesome comedic writer, awesome comedian. His opener, I, I, I knew 50% of the punchlines before he got to them because it was the same damn jokes that has been for the past 30 years. Yeah. And I was Shout telling like, to, you, like, uh, he about to say this. Watch. Shout out to but, Easter Ray because um, – I enjoy yes. watching, uh, well, before she even started with her show Insecure, she had a show on YouTube called The Misadventures of the Awkward Black Girl. I know. And cool. You sure so, always come over my house and we used to watch the episodes. Yeah, <laughs> so ironically, out. my homeboy, who I grew up with, he found the videos first. Um, and then he he's like, have you ever seen this? And I had never seen it. Uh, but I was able to relate. Like I found a home in watching that because I'm. I was like, I'm an awkward black girl too. Like I can't relate to this. Like so, 
she created, I mean, this was a thing, but she, I guess she put a name to it, you know? And um, so for, she op made it cool to be just a regular, awkward black girl. You don't got to be the cool girl all the time. You don't got to be anything. You don't got to be the sports yeah, You don't got to be the, the loud one. You ain't got to be this. You ain't got to be all this. And there is such a niche for that type of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And oh. I didn't realize later on after watching the brandy versus monica uh uh versus brandy is the awkward girl before there was a name for it yeah that's who brand that's who brandy is she's the awkward girl she showed it a whole lot during that versus battle um but yeah no, i don't feel like there's anything wrong with being the awkward girl no that's cool I i'm so as you become older, you realize being an awkward person gives you more of a diverse personality that people gravitate toward. Okay? See, I'm, I mean, I'm for not. real, like, that's, yeah. Right. You had a second night. Good when people are looking for more depth in your personality, some more diversity in the things that you do is less predictable. Yeah, being an awkward person and enjoying things outside of the stereotype uh yeah yeah for a lot of people that's something that's a definite thing you like to connect with and yeah because yeah. I, I was the awkward black kid i'm the one that knows random dumbass facts about shit that people don't really care about and i'm a i'm a geek for the random stuff and all and you know just, like my husband because he does the same thing yo he that's what's up. me and my husband probably can hang out he said, I, he's like, I like to, he's like, oh, I could add that to my useless information. Oh, I got tons of useless information. I'm great at trivial pursuits and, and dumb that's shit. Him. I'm, I'm just. That's him. Stuff that like, people are like, who cares? He's like, oh, well. Right. And I'm like. And I'll be like, what you mean? Why don't you care? This, this, you care because if it wasn't for that, you wouldn't have the thing you like. You wouldn't do this. And this is this thing. And that, yeah. He's all for being Mr. Right all the time, too. Like, well, he's your Mr. Right, and that's what's up. Do you think? Yeah, always has to be right. And if he isn't right, then he'll Google it. And I'm like, that's hey. <laughs> like you're annoying. <laughs> Google's awesome. He's like, why? He's like, why would I want to walk around being misinformed? I was like, true. Hey. I was like, who cares? Like, who's going to really care? Oh, like, somebody does, because someone on Google wrote an article for whatever he's looking up. Somebody else cares. I don't want to know about those people. The people that care enough to write articles on it, on some of the weird stuff that, yeah. There's so, what's y'all's thoughts on? on like, the, so, what's. What's y'all's thoughts on this R. Kelly getting beat up in prison situation? Who cares? You need to learn how to bob and weave. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, so, I so here, here what I got to say about this, man. Um, it's not surprising. Um, there's probably supposed to keep him out of general population so that doesn't happen, but I'm sure the guards don't really give a shit. <laughs> he He's probably not. in there singing for oodles and oodle packets. <laughs> hey, hey, I know you know what you know what I was laughing because before he went in, there was this joke going around about, you know, how how disappointed and upset would you be if you've been winning the, the prison talent show for six for six years straight and then R. Kelly comes in. You're like, fuck. I can't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> R. Kelly probably in there writing some bangers, though. <laughs> Yo! You can't deny the man's creative ability. He's going to come out there. with some He's probably release, running a prison choir. He's Yo. like, I was up in yeah. the cell. <laughs> here we go. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do, let's do R. Kelly's like, choir wish, in prison. I wish, I wish, I wish. Kanye West's choir. We'll do Kanye West's choir versus R. Kelly's prison choir. Then we'll do that as a versus. See what happens. Oh man, don't don't do that, cause 
Oof, I don't know. Some of them jailhouse birds might be able to sing. No, they can. Oh, they, they can. definitely can. No, they can. They can. Uh, Shoot, they like Jennings. Do the yeah, perfect Life Jennings. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there's a lot of talent that's locked up in prison. A whole lot of talent locked up. They won't let me out. <laughs> yeah, Acons. <laughs> Convict music. Convict music. Convict music. Bro. Convict music. Oh, man. Just saying. Yeah, R. Kelly getting beat up. Not surprised. Um, Eh. I'm kind of surprised, you know, Bill Cosby hasn't had any altercations. But who knows? Why would he? He probably has, though. He and just why, can't. Why would he he so can't see who. Him. He can't see who beat him up though. <laughs> Messed up. Ain't nobody trying to beat up. You can't go in there try to act hard like I beat up Bill Cosby. Like what? <laughs> somebody <laughs> knocked his food off the table. His Jello pudding. Yeah, he might be getting bullied a little bit. People fucking with him, but they ain't gonna beat up Bill Cosby. Yeah, right. I'm sorry, but. I just mm, I don't know. I to be honest with you, I I hope somebody pees on R. Kelly's head. Like he might enjoy he it. He might see what I'm saying though, you can't go and thunder out of it if he likes it. He's like, my turn. And like, what's up to you? Like it's not a that's not a Because <laughs> he was in he's into men as well. So he's probably in there getting his whole he don't care. Yeah, he's right in there getting his whole life. So wait, is that W H O L E or just H O L E? You said it. I didn't say it. You said that. You said you said whole. The rail is like said you said whole. He, said he look. Yeah. It could be either yeah, one. Whatever, you want, whatever you're feeling. Whatever you're. I'm into. not feeling. He's feeling. He's feeling. That's he. You said his whole, his whole life. That's what his you whole said. life. You said, his whole life. Yep. Yep. Woo. Okay. So, uh, Alicia, I know you watched the uh, the battle. What you, what you think about it after watching it? Um, Alicia did not watch the battle. Oh. I didn't watch the battle either. I'm not able to watch the battle. Okay, well, it, if for those of you who wanted to watch it, it is on YouTube. Uh, it, I yeah, was hoping that it was somewhere where I could. Yep, it's right on YouTube. It's three hours. All right, Sherelle, Sherelle, you're the big fan of both of them. What did you think? So, for those that, who I don't know, opinions. For those who don't know, I did um uh, a review on the Brandy versus Monica. So, if you want like an uh, like an extensive version of my opinion, you could go to YouTube or to my Facebook live uh, post. But I, um, I loved it. I it was, it, I loved it. Like, I loved it. They gave us everything we needed. Uh, you know, Brandy being her quirky, awkward self, Monica being her slightly shady self. They had a little reconciliation moment. Um, and they played all the jams. Um, there's a couple jams that they did not play, but I got my life during, during it. Um, I did tally up. Um, so you know how usually when you do verses, they do like song and song, and then you decide which one is best, right? Uh, I could not do it that way because I like a lot of the songs equally. Um, so whenever one of them played one of my jams, I just gave them a point. So I did it that way. Um, and when I did that, Monica had 17 and Brandy had 16. So Monica had the edge, uh, with one song, but Brandy did not come to play. Like she was in there singing live, hitting all her runs. She added in a, um, a mashup of the Moesha theme song, a mashup of Impossible with Whitney Houston. She See? came, 
She even uh-huh. added up, added in shout outs from Biggie and Tupac when they shouted her out uh, in their own song. So Brandy didn't come to play no games. See, I, I, I've, I've had a couple of people on my timeline that have, that are music people. Um, and everybody that besides maybe like a couple, like three or four people that have watched it and said it, everybody said Brandy killed it. Like, hey, yeah, most people said Brandy. She she did kill it. Yeah, she, she um, didn't come to play. Didn't do what you know. They said she, it was great, like between the two of them. But hands down, Brandy put on that fire. Brandy definitely. Brandy had poems. She like I said, she had her mo to the eat to the. She gave us a little snippet of that. Like she just was not playing around. Um. Like I said, I had to just do it like, oh, that's my jam, tally. That's my jam, tally. So when I did it that way, Monica just had it one point over Brandy. But Brand- Monica, ki- Brandy killed it. Period. She killed it. Um, and what's killing me now, though, is these memes. Of course, yo. The memes have been hilarious. Oh, they getting on them outfits. <laughs> When they when Yo. they uh, photoshopped them white Lord shoes on Monica, Farquhar. they put them white shoes on Monica. I was like, "Bruh, I'm done." Yo, the Lord Farquhar and the then uh, the then white chicks. <laughs> Yo, as a celebrity, you can't do shit, yo. Hey, there's always something. Yeah, internet mm-hmm. has no chill. That's everything, though. Yeah, that's my. That's, I mean, that's my thoughts on it. I love them both um, for different reasons, and I'm glad that they were able to reconcile and come together and do this. I thought Brandy was annoying as heck, though. I love her, but she was being so annoying, putting Monica on the spot the whole time. Extra. She put she put Monica on the spot about the time Monica punched her in the face. She put Monica on the spot. <laughs> What? She put Monica <laughs> on the spot about getting her to do this versus because Mo- we know Monica didn't really want to do it. So she put her on the spot, kind of letting people know she didn't really want to do it. She no. put Monica on the spot by singing live and trying to get Monica to do harmonies. And Monica was like, not doing it. She put Monica on the spot with keep mentioning a tour that they should do a tour, knowing that Monica is like, I'll think about it. She put Monica on the spot. Brandy sung A Change Gonna Come live a cappella and killed it and was like trying to get Monica to sing. And Monica was Yo, like, Oh man. <laughs> so the whole uh, thing was uh, Brandy. You finish, you finish singing a song. And, All right, Monica. Tell me how you hit, him, hit me in the face. What? What is Because <laughs> Monica was trying to set up. So gone. So you know, she's talking about how in her old life she used to kick down doors and slap chick. And Brandy was like, "Well, since they know about it, I was one of the." <laughs> she punched me in the face. And kick I know down the door, smack you, you, you took out dude's eyeball. I'm telling you, the Monica is not having it. From immature, <laughs> so I don't want to hear about it. No, about you. Uh, uh, uh. It was. was it? it was. Playful. Yeah. It was playful. And what we saw with Monica, with Brandy, she just, like I said, I really, I never knew this about her, never categorized her as this, but she's the awkward girl who doesn't always say the right things. Like she taught, she gave us a story about how when she met Tupac, she said West Side and did the West Side sign to him. Like she was like, That's why? That thought was that? hilarious. Yeah, like she just. She probably thought awkward. that shit was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he was like, oh, yeah, yeah like it funny. was it was shady but it was cool and they 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 congratulate each other they talked about how they were glad they could come together so yeah it gave us it gave us fans who grew up with them everything we needed <laughs> all right cool 
That's All cool. right. So people were talking about this. It's kind of popped up a little bit. You know, Escape was trying to find someone to do a versus with. And I'm not, I'd rather see like SWV and In Vogue than like escaping somebody. 